So let's look a little bit more at the harmonic motion particles connected by the Once we found the equilibrium position, we can ask ourselves how do these particles fluctuate about it? Suppose they've got a little bit of energy left over in the system, how would they be oscillating? And that's definitely worth investigating. So we first run the same code again, and that's hidden behind this tab over here, so I don't want to show you again. So this is the code that actually generates the random network and then minimizes the energy within that network, the forces within that network, or the energies in that case, so that we actually go to, to the equilibrium situation. Then we look what happens if we add a little bit more code over there, and we'll try to solve the same problem again, but essentially trying to look what happens for fluctuations about the equilibrium. So in order to do that, we generate the energy. And what we really do is we find, an en find the energy and essentially ignore the chop term for the time being and the expand term. What I really do is that I, for each spring in my network of springs, I take half times k times the distance dotted into the distance, so that's the distance squared, so that's a half kr squared, and essentially we write it as a function and apply that to every string in the network, and then apply plus to that, which really means we get a list of terms and we add all of those terms together, and the addition of all of those terms is clearly the total energy. Now what we do is we actually rewrite xi as the x that will be our equilibrium values, plus a fluctuation about the equilibrium, which we should be doing, and the same for y, and then in the end we substitute solution which actually will replace these xi by the equilibrium position. So we've now re-expressed the whole thing in terms of the fluctuations. This is a rather special case where that's not strictly necessary, but I still find this the most elegant thing to do. So once we made that expansion, of course since we are at an equilibrium, the total potential should have no linear terms in the fluctuations. They should all be quadratic. And since we started with something that was quadratic, it's just the same as the quadratic part of the original problem. So that's why I mean I could have started with the original problem, but that's not what I've done. Now, so what I do is have a constant, which is the minimum energy, plus a quadratic term that describes the fluctuation about that. So what we do is we create a matrix of that. So it's the matrix of all the harmonic frequencies. Then the next step we do, we take, so we first take all these vectors, we flatten them, and essentially, so this is the thing, then we take the derivative with respect to all the displacements from equilibrium to second order, and the curly brackets over here really mean that it, this is a matrix of exactly the length twice the number of points by twice the number of points. And then we calculate the eigenvalues of the matrix. Are you willing to take a punt on what happens to these eigenvalues? Well, if we look very carefully at the list of eigenvalues for this particular case, we see that they all come in pairs. They range from 0.2 to 12, so the condition number of the matrix is 24. You need a very low condition number, so these are incredibly accurate numbers, a good representation of the eigenvalues. And, uh, for example, if we look at two of the eigenvectors, and this may not immediately tr clear, but I, prove, I look at the last two, the minus two means the last two parts of the eigen system. I look at the second part, which is the eigenvector, uh, are the eigenvectors, I look at the first eigenvector, and I look at the second eigenvector. So essentially, and if you look really, really carefully at these things, which takes me a little while, then Typically, it depends a little bit on the network. In this case, there's about two places that dominate this thing, and if you count carefully, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 17, 18, 19, 20. So the 21st and 22nd, so they an X and a Y component. And if I look at the second eigenvalue, you will find that if I've done this right, that they have another X and Y components, but they occur A in the reverse order, so it's 0 0.53 minus 0 0.57 plus 0.57 plus 0.53. So these are two factors that are essentially 
of the same length but perpendicular to each other. And that is no big surprise, because if the, freak, the bath is still exactly harmonic, which it clearly is in this case, I expect that these things are actually going to be the same but in perpendicular direction for the same frequency. So we see happening what we expect to happen. Now there may well be some challenges we can add to this and we may ask you to do some of these later on. Thank you very much.